everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the recent casting announcement with Michael Mickelhatton being cast as Tam Al Thor in Amazon's upcoming Wheel of Time adaptation. I know I'm a bit late to the party but I'll let you know where I've been in a minute. We'll be diving into the casting, analyzing Michael's background, the role of Tam Al Thor, and then whether he'll do a good job or not in the role. Then we'll do a deeper dive into why Michael may have been chosen and what it means for the role of Tam Althor in the show, even addressing some of the rumors going around about how Amazon may adapt the part. But as I said earlier, I know I'm a bit late to the party here. Uh, this was announced like four or five days ago at the making of this video, so I figured I'd let you know where I was. As many of you guys know from previous videos, I actually have been cast in the Wheel of Time show. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I've been cast as Galad Damadred due to my crazy good looks, and I was in Prague all week filming my parts for the first season of the show. Okay, obviously that was a joke. But I was doing something important that I wanted to share with all of you, as many of you actually participated in this. This past week was the fundraising event for the Make-A-Wish Foundation that so many of you graciously supported over the past few months. We raised over $2,500 on the channel, which is a crazy amount of money for you all to help out with. The average wish from Make-A-Wish for the kids starts around $6,000. So this small YouTube channel and the community around it were able to help grant a wish by supplying half the money to do so. The parent company to the franchise for my business was able to raise a total of $240,000 for this event alone, of which your money was a part. I couldn't be more grateful, all of you, that you helped out. This was an amazing community. I wanted to quickly show you some of the pictures from the event, and there was a wish granted while we were there. A young lady from North Carolina that's suffering from cystic fibrosis had her wish granted to be able to attend film school and to have the equipment that she needed to make her dreams come true. Check this out. Octavia's illness it doesn't go away, right? There's these great treatments that have come out, but it's something that there's no complete cure for right now. So these incredible treatments that are coming out, they're gonna stop it in its tracks, hopefully. So it doesn't progress any further. So her lung function stays higher and doesn't deteriorate. So there's a lot of great hope ahead, but she deserves a wish. It doesn't go away. It's every day, it's chronic, and you all are helping make that happen. And because we're actually gonna make that happen right now. We're gonna grant her wish right now. We have all of your film editing equipment here. We have all of your stuff, bring it on out. Your wish is happening in this very moment. All of the gear, all of the photography equipment, all of the editing equipment, everything you wanted. They sourced it, they got it. This is everything that you said you wanted to have so you could use it. And all of you have made this possible. I know they wrapped it all. They should have just left it on wraps. So they could show it all to everybody. But. So, again, thank you all for your support. This community is awesome. Thank you for being a part of this. I really believe in giving back, and you all were a part of that. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers only through the shadow rising. If you have not finished the first four books of the series, please watch at your own risk. Now, obviously, the casting is old news at this point, being a couple days old, and we already knew that Michael Mickelhatton was a part of the show after the table read video. Check out the video I did in breaking down the table read if you want to see more on that topic. But needless to say, the announcement of Michael Mickelhatton as Tam was confirmation that it was truly him in the video, even though we had really figured that out already, and that we know now the exact role that he will be playing. Previously, I had speculated that he would either be playing Tom Marilyn or Tam Althor, and it looks like we got our answer. Now, before analyzing the pick, I know many of you are somewhat disappointed that we didn't get more information released. I think many of you would have liked more pictures or other actors and actresses announced. This is obviously leading to a lot of speculation as well, which I'll address later in the video. My short answer to this is to be patient. This would have been a much bigger announcement had we not already figured out that Michael Michael Hatton was in the show. They have many, many more months of Watt Wednesdays ahead of them, and I'm sure we'll get all of the juicy information that we want. We just all need to to be patient. But as for this announcement, so who is Michael Mickelhatton? What has he done before? Most fans are going to know him from Game of Thrones where he played Roose Bolton, the man responsible for the Red Wedding. He's actually been an actor since the early 90s and has played quite a few roles over the years, with Game of Thrones being his largest. He's had roles in the Justice League movie recently as a minor villain at the beginning of the movie, and he made small appearances in the critically acclaimed HBO miniseries Chernobyl. He has typically played villains 
but his voice is deep and stoic and kind of has a fatherly demeanor about him that makes him kind of a compelling actor. The reason I think he often succeeds as a villain is that he can seem so trustworthy and reliable and wise, and so his betrayal in Game of Thrones is legendary because it's not who we were led to believe that he was. So can he pull off Tam Althor? Well, Tam is calm and wise and someone that's respected by basically everybody that knows him. He's a great marksman and was accounted a blade master in his youth as well as an accomplished officer in the Ilioner Companions. If you want to know more about Tam, I did a character profile video of Tam. I'll have that linked at the end of the video if you want to watch that. But he is Rand's adopted father, so he must look enough like Rand uh, that Rand might believe that Tam is his father, but enough different for him that it's clear that Rand was adopted to us. I think he checks these boxes. I think this is a great pick, and I think he'll certainly excel at the role. He seems like a natural fit for Tam the more and more I think about it. Just his voice and the way that he kind of carries himself, I think is going to have him very well suited for the role. But this is what leads us to, to what I believe is the bigger question. Why cast such a relatively big name actor for a fairly small part? I actually think this is a fairly legitimate question, and I want to take some time to look over a couple different possibilities as to why he may have been cast here. Firstly, let's address it this way. Michael Micklehatton is not necessarily that big of a name in acting. In fact, many of you would probably not have known exactly who he was other than someone said that's the guy that played Bruce Bolton. Bruce Bolton is not even a big part of the Game of Thrones TV show, but he did have an extremely memorable role as he gave Rob Stark the Lannisters regards. He is a really big name in the fantasy TV world, but this isn't as though they hired Tom Cruise to play Tam. But I do think that this is an extremely strategic hire as well. He's obviously very skilled as an actor and well suited to this role, but the fact that he did play a small but memorable role on Game of Thrones can pull some interest to the Wheel of Time series through marketing. He has a recognizable face to anyone who watched Game of Thrones, and that was a lot of people. Rafe said later in a tweet on Wednesday that he had tried to stay away from Game of Thrones actors, but thought that this choice was too good to pass up. And while I certainly agree on his capability of playing the role, I think that it's also a fit because he's just popular enough that he can attract some interest, but not so popular that it feels like Wheel of Time is trying to ride Game of Thrones popularity. I think this is a pretty smart hire. But that still doesn't really address the fact that he does have a relatively big name, and this technically isn't that large of a part until much later in the series. You typically would not bring in even a moderately famous actor to only have him disappear from the story after the first episode, assuming they follow the books exactly. This has led to quite a bit of speculation about what they are doing with the character as well, as if he might be combined with another character, or the plot significantly altered. One of the more extreme theories going around is that Tam will be combined with Tom Marilyn, as we haven't gotten a casting announcement or leak about Tom as of yet. I don't think that there's a lot of evidence for this, and that seems like quite an odd place to take the plot, and that would create more problems than I think it solves, but the lack of information is causing people to speculate wildly. For the record, I do not believe that that will be the case, but if not that, what could the expanded role be? Well, let's take a look at a couple possibilities. First, let's consider that it may not be an expanded role. As I said earlier, Michael McElhatton is a good actor, but by no means an extremely famous actor and does not command extremely high salaries or anything that would warrant a larger role. In fact, he had a one episode appearance on Chernobyl recently and many of his movie and television appearances have been fairly small parts. It's entirely possible that him being introduced now is only to be brought back later when Perrin heads back to the Two Rivers in season two or three. His name could get someone to watch, but then he could be filmed in maybe just some small flashback scenes with Rand later on and only have a small role until later on until it needs to be a bigger role. But let's say he does have an expanded role. What could it be? Some have speculated that he will travel with the party as they leave Emmons Field. This is in the same line of thinking that combining him with Tom Marilyn. I don't believe that this would be the case as it would change quite a bit of the story later on and actually removes quite a bit of the conflict and fear that Rand has as he's kind of coming to terms with the fact that Tam is his adopted father. I don't believe that he would be going with them. So this could leave us a couple other options. One, we could see more of he and Abel's trip to Tarvalin to find out what happens to the boys. There could be an expanded plot line of their journey, and the focus there gives us multiple plot lines to follow, so we could kind of follow them around while other stuff is going on. Or it could be another plot line entirely, rather than their journey to Tarvalin. It could be a completely other thread or something made up just for the show. I don't think that that's likely, though. My guess is actually that he'll be used fairly extensively in flashbacks. Not cheesy flashbacks, but there is this internal struggle that Rand has over Tam not being his real father, 
And this emotional connection can be strengthened by seeing their relationship fleshed out further. Given that we only have a short amount of time in the two rivers at the beginning of the story, this can be accomplished as Rand dreams or remembers his father. So that could be flashbacks or little pieces where we see some of the past. This will keep Tam a part of the story until later when the White Cloaks and Trollocs invade the Two Rivers. I also think that we will see Tam in Tarvalin, but maybe not the entire journey there as we really only have limited time for the show. Regardless, I do think that Tam is going to have a somewhat expanded role in the first season and Michael Micklehatton will do an amazing job of bringing our favorite adopted father to life. What do you all think of the casting? Do you like this choice? How do you feel about having a Game of Thrones actor in the Wheel of Time TV show? And do you think he's going to have an expanded role? Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content and you want to see more Wheel of Time stuff. I make all Wheel of Time content all the time here. Also, please make sure to check out the offer from audible.com if you guys want a free audiobook. It's a great way to check out audiobooks and to support the channel. Obviously, I love the Wheel of Time audiobooks. They've been a great sponsor of the channel for some time now. Just click the link below in the description to get more information on how to get your audiobook. This is the best coffee ever because it's out of the best mug ever. If you want to get some uh, if you want to get some Nablus merch, also check the links down below. You can get your very own mug like this and check out the Patreon to find out how to support the channel. With the craziness of YouTube ad revenue and whatnot, it truly is the best way to support us here. Thank you to all of you that already do. You can click the link down below and check out some of the roles and support tiers. I appreciate all of you. And last plug, make sure to join the Discord to be a part of the community. Discord is kind of like an online chatting platform. We do pictures. I'm pretty active there, and we've got a nice little community going. Click the link below. Even if you don't know how to do it, it'll, te it'll teach you everything. Again, thank you all for watching. I have a ton of other videos coming out here soon, and we have been making some serious progress on the website. I'm super excited to get that out to all of you. Uh, thanks again, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?